Hey gang, welcome back to Scuba Diver Magazine. If you don't follow the podcast and you haven't been listening to my history in recent weeks, uh, I've been away from a couple of weeks on paternity leave, so I haven't been answering your questions online for a little while, but I'm back now answering your scuba diving questions every single week. Uh, welcome to Scuba Diver Magazine. Welcome to Ask Mark, which is a scuba diving Q&A, weekly Q&A, answering your questions. So if you have any scuba diving questions, pop them down in the comments below and use the Ask Mark hashtag to get featured in an upcoming Q&A. It probably might be a few weeks ahead of time unless you're a channel member. Channel members, when I upload this, it's usually fairly soon after the question's been answered. Um, but if you're not a channel member, then you, you basically have to wait a little while, uh, a few weeks before your question actually gets answered. So if there are any time sensitive ones, um, I, I, I do my best to answer your um, your comments via text but to actually elaborate on it uh, it usually takes about a month or so by the time it actually goes live on the channel uh, but anyway this week I'm answering questions about hose routing with a recreational BCD, uh, regulator comparison, comparing some regs, thoughts on a particular BCD and some regulators, computer conservatism and DSMB cleaning. Let's dive straight in with the first question. Which this week comes from Rob Orm, or Ormy, I'm sorry Rob, um, but anyway Thanks for all the uh, fantastic advice over the years. You're more than welcome. How can a recreational diver with a jacket or back inflation BCD rig up a long hose setup without a canister or a hose retainer on the waist strap for hose management? Or how can I rig a hose retainer on my Hydros Pro? I switched to a long hose rig when I switched to an X deep backplate wing, but after two years had to go back to a back inflator BCD, a Scuba Hydros Pro. Uh, I don't have a canister or a hose retainer on the X deep so I had a hose management issue with that setup as well now that I'm back with a BCD I reluctantly went back to a recreational rig um, uh, Octo setup due to hose management thanks so a long hose promo donate setup but without something to hook it underneath uh, it's basically a tuck method um, so for those of you who don't know this is what you typically do on like a waistband when you have a, a longer hose. So with this <clears throat> hose style setup, how the hose usually routes from your first stage, it comes behind your right hand shoulder down the side of your back. It then loops back up and then this, sorry, it's a lot easier when it's actually attached to a first stage. Uh, this has a second stage on the other end and it loops around your neck and then it goes into your mouth. Now, the problem with this is that this section of hose, especially if you have like a lighter braided hose, like a Miflex or something, it's quite light and it just kind of floats or it gets in the way. So what divers do is they tuck this underneath something. It's usually a canister light, as, the, uh, as Rob said, or it can be like a hose retainer bar. I tend to use my dive knife as well because it's on my waistband whoops, and it's, it drops down a little bit so I can tuck the hose underneath it. But if I need to donate the regulator, I can just donate it very quickly and it naturally kind of falls away underneath that knife. And if you need to release the hose, you can just tug it free. It is very quick release. Um, but if you don't have access to that because you're diving in like a jacket style BCD or you have a, um, a wing style BCD that has an integrated weight pockets and you can't attach a drop down dive knife or something, the, the best option usually is to tuck a, um, a quick loop just underneath your waistband um, so it kind of hooks up underneath your waistband and then back up. Uh, because if you're trying to tuck it underneath completely, then it's it gets tangled when you go to deploy it. But when it's like this, it's like a lot of the modern style BCD Octo pockets where you just pinch that hose together and tuck it in. It's still quick release because you can tug on the hose and it pulls it free. Uh, but you basically want a, an unobstructed way to, to yank that hose free. And yeah, if you just tuck it underneath your waistband, that's usually the best option. Um, but do like be aware of any entanglement issues, something that it can get hooked on. You want to avoid any of those. And on Hydras Pro, you should be pretty fine. Um, otherwise, you can do the same thing, but with a, a D-ring. It's not my preferred method. I've seen divers use like the uh, the D-ring on your inflator 
uh, not your inflator, sorry, your, uh, your shoulder strap, the one that you adjust, it usually has a D-ring at the bottom. They tuck the hose into that. I'm not a huge fan of it because I don't like it in that greater restriction because it just bends the hose a bit too much. Um, so me personally, if I was diving something like a Hydros Pro with a long hose primary donate, I'd, uh, I'd do it a little bit like this and, uh, and that way it's still quick release, but it keeps your hose just where you want it. Julie Kennedy asks, thanks for the Q and A's, love them, you're welcome. Uh, I bought a new, uh, a brand new set of Apex DS4 regulators in DIN with ATX 40 second stage and an octopus. However, I also have a set of Scuba Pro regulators, A clamp, a Mark II with an R295 second stage and an octopus, second hand but serviced. Which ones are better regulators or the better regulators? Uh, I'm diving in our Scottish cold sea locks. Uh, any advice is welcome. Um, so personally, I mean, just from like a mechanical stage, I'd go for the Apex one because it's DIN. So you get a, a more secure fitting onto your cylinder. It's a lot harder to get a slipped O-ring in there and a uh, free flow on your first stage. Um, and the overall regulator um, like design. So a Mark II is a bit like that. This is a scoop up. Uh, this is an Oceanic SP5, and the Mark II is very similar in its this like wheel and spoke design. So the hoses come out at these like fixed angles, which I find quite limiting. Um, but as a first stage, the Mark II is a lovely second stage. Um, that's correct in first stage. And um, they have upgraded it since. It's now the Mark II Evo. They just upgraded um, the, the performance, especially in colder waters. But I'd be okay diving with it. Neither of them are the manufacturer's like high-end regulators, but for diving in colder waters, I think you're fine with both, especially the DS4. DS4, uh, in comparison, uh, is... It's, it's similar to this, but it doesn't have the rotating turret in that instead of being like an inline first stage like the uh, the Mark II or this SP5, it's like 90 degrees and it just gives you better, in my opinion, better hosing options. And yeah, DIN. I always prefer DIN over A-clamp, but you can get that swapped over. That's relatively cheap. If you find a, um, a Scuba Pro regulator servicing technician at Dive Center, um, they should be able to adjust that so that it's now din instead of a clamp um but yeah as far as performance i mean the um uh sorry I, i'm looking at an sp5 and i'm thinking about a mark ii uh, the mark ii is a, a piston first stage um so it's quite high um high end as it were i used to teach on them uh, and the uh, the 295s a uh, lovely second stage you'll see them all over the world um they're quite old technology now um, they probably haven't made them for seven years or something probably even more um, whereas the uh, the ATX I mean ATX is one of those that I think Apex have not wanted to discontinue for a long time but people just keep buying it it's one of those like designs it's like a crocodile it's just like it, it works and divers love it so they keep buying it so apex just kind of have to keep making it um and a lot of divers will have their atx's for decades because they just work they're simple they're effective and they do the job um so if you put those two regulators in front of me um and ask me to go for a dive with you i'd go for the apex personally just because the the ds4 in my opinion is just a nicer first stage and the uh, the second stage as well whilst it's probably not as modern as the r295 it, it does the job perfectly well um so yeah, what I would do if I had those two regulators, I'd have the Apex as my primary and then the Scuba Pro as my like uh, stage cylinder or something or a bailout. And um, I'd change that A-clamp into a DIN. Steve Barnes says, hi Mark, what are your thoughts on the Cressy Travel Light BCD for someone looking for a jacket style travel BCD? Also, what are your thoughts on the Mares 15X first and second stage as far as overall performance and cost? Looking forward to your thoughts on both. Uh, so the Travel Light, yeah, 
it's it's nothing fancy but it's exactly what you need it's a it's a jacket style travel bcd uh cressy make very nice equipment they've been doing it for decades they're one of the like original bunch that have been around for decades so they do make good equipment travel lights yeah it's it's relatively basic but you tend to get that on a lot of travel style bcds anyway they strip away a lot of the excess stuff and it's more about the weight as opposed to the overall comfort and all the extra little bells and whistles and stuff but it'll it'll serve you perfectly well it's, it's a decent bcd from a a decent brand as well and the mars 15x so mars 15x is just the first stage um it's a good, nice, compact little first stage, decent power, decent breathe coming through it. Uh, you can get several little second stages from it. You can get the, oh, you can get the, the loop, which is that, um, the, the vertical one, which is unusual. You can get the Rover and I think the dual, I think the dual is the best, um, out of those. And, um, yeah, nice lightweight second stage. So again, good for traveling and, yeah, as far as performance, it's nice. It is not again. It's not the, the the top end high fancy fancy bells and whistles and all that kind of stuff. But it has a lot of clever things inside of it. So it's got the um, the vortex assisted design with that slight bypass tube on the uh, on the dual. That helps to just give you a, a smoother breathe through it. And with the the plastic second stage, very light as well. So yeah, perfect for travel. Uh, I think the Technically, the 62X is a, a smaller, uh, more lightweight, higher performance first stage, but there's nothing wrong with the 15X. It's like the sort of the workhorse of the Mars range, and it does perfectly fine in both warm and cold waters. So um, yeah, I, I'd be it's, it's that good balance between yeah, performance and cost. Drioni says, hi, I recently did some shore dives with a long surface swim with current uh, with my Avanti Quattro fins. They felt awful and needed a ton of force on the surface. I opted to swim them on my back. What other techniques do you recommend for long surface swims? Yeah, the surface is a weird place and it feels as if it would be harder to swim under the water as opposed to on the surface. But for some reason, it does feel harder swimming on the surface. Um, for like raw power, I'll actually swim on my sides because when you're swimming either on your front on the surface, every time you lift your fin out of the water, you're wasting a lot of energy just splashing water around. Whereas if you're on the side, both of your fins are always in the water, always at the, at the same time. So it's as if you're swimming uh, underwater and you're getting maximum efficiency. Um, so that's for like raw power. If I need to get somewhere, I'll probably be slightly on my side. Um, but for long surface swims, I'm typically on my back, it tends to be the most comfortable. And I have my BCD inflated as much as I need to so that I'm, I, I'm on the surface. I'm not having to swim up to stay on the surface. My BCD is holding my, uh, my buoyancy, so I'm staying on the surface, but not so high that I'm out of the water. Sometimes that can be quite hard and it can actually, if your body is that high out of the water, it can roll you over, which can be a bit of a pain. So I deflate it a little bit, just so I sink into the water a bit. I'm nice and stable. Check where I'm going, have a look at the other side so that I know, and I can kind of picture the opposite. So I know that I'm kind of swimming in a straight line and just frog kick usually keeps your fins in the water and it's it's quite you've got the the big powerful muscles of your thighs really doing a lot of the work and it's nice and even as well uh, so if you have one dominant leg then it's less likely than like a scissor kick or something for you to come slightly off course because you're you're just using your legs together um, but yeah uh, after i don't know depending on how um, how confident you are in maintaining a straight line. Just kind of roll around from time to time and, uh, and have a look around, make sure that you're heading in the right direction. But yeah, if I'm swimming on the surface, I'm typically on my back because it's, it's quite a weird position to swim on your front without being face down in the water. And I want to be able to, uh, to maintain sort of what's, uh, what's out there, but yeah, just keeping, keeping contact with your buddies, always listen out for, for boat traffic and all that good stuff. Um, yeah, do try and pay attention to any kind of current. So it's not pulling you out in any, um, wayward direction. Uh, but yeah, typically on my back because my cylinders are, um, sort of acting a bit like a keel to hold me in the water and just frog kick my way. Um, to wherever I need to get to.
Joseph Schreiner says, Hi Mark, I have a question about setting up conservatism. When is time or reason to change it? I saw a difference between my Garmin Mark II and my Cressy, uh, uh, sorry, my guide's Cressy computer. Not sure what model or algorithm. When I changed mine to medium, our NDL was matching. Uh, thanks and keep up the great work. So your, uh, your Garmin Mark II, that will be on a Buellmann ZHL 16C, I believe, with gradient factors. Um, the, the Cressy, Cressy tend to have RGBM, uh, which is a lot like Cinto's uh, RGBM algorithm. So you would naturally have slightly different NDLs. And I wouldn't worry too much about it being like exactly the same at all times. I'd be more uh, like concerned about just diving to the most conservative one. It, it's just for safety because your your conservatism, you can on your Garmin you can like completely customize it with the gradient factors, and it's it's all I'm trying to think of the best way to. Um, um, the, the more you learn about like gradient factors and decompression theory, that's when you can start to tinker them. For most divers, the usual like um, factory setting medium is perfectly fine. Um, the only reason you'd set it to like a more aggressive one is if you are like perfectly fit and healthy, you're diving in a nice easy dive and warm water, uh, you're, 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 yeah, you're fit and healthy, you've had plenty of water, you're well hydrated and all that kind of stuff, your body is working at top, top condition and you want to stay down as long as possible on this dive because you in your body and your mind, you're, you're aware that you're, you're less likely to have decompression complications then you can be a bit more aggressive in the um, in the decompression algorithm. However, I'd rather err on the side of caution, just keep it as conservative as the computer recommends, or as I can understand my uh, my decompression, because it's I'd far rather spend an extra minute or two at depth doing a stop as opposed to just rushing it, because most dive computers they are. Uh, I can't think of the right words, but they're, they're made to fit just anybody. Anybody can buy a Garmin Mark II, strap it on their wrist and go for a dive. But not all people are exactly the same. So it's a matter of kind of understanding that and trying to be as conservative as possible. Because whilst one person might be able to make that dive and come out perfectly fine, another person, their body might be a bit more uh, predisposed to decompression illness. And then even though the dive computer says, yeah, everything's fine, it's not because what it, the dive computer doesn't know exactly what's going on inside of each of your body compartments and tissues. So it's better just to err on the side of caution and always stick to the most conservative dive computer. And um, when to actually change it is when you start to understand decompression theory a bit more. There are great, like, um, oh, I've got studies stuck in my mind as well, uh, like video lectures and things that you can see online. They're, they're quite dry. Um, some of the um, uh, the presenters are very good and they do break it down so if you have no idea about decompression theory or whatnot they, they build you up into it they build that nice foundation so you understand what's happening in your tissues and then what these different settings mean so I'd watch a whole bunch of those make sure that you understand it and then tinker with your, your computer but not before if you don't understand what the gradient factors are and what they're doing then no just leave it on like medium or like a lower safer setting and um and yeah just end the dive a little bit sooner it's better to end the dive sooner than end up hurting yourself but yeah you, you will see this a, a fair amount and the usual recommendation is just to dive to the most conservative dive computer so if your dive computer says yep you're okay to ascend um, no more stops but your buddy says no actually I've still got two minutes just stay down with them uh, it is better for both of you and then you can exit the water knowing that you're both as safe as possible Ale Korea says how to properly clean a closed and semi-closed DSMB should we rinse its interior yes uh, so after a dive um, with a, uh, a DSMB I usually clean them so uh, so that's a closed one and you want a semi-closed that's the semi-closed um, so 
even though a closed DSMB is, as the name suggests, closed, you'll still get water on the inside. And it's usually gonna come from the inflation method uh, or whilst purging as well, because when you're actually diving, when you're in the water, this is completely deflated, but there's still a small amount of water inside of that valve. So as soon as you go to inflate it, that shoots a bit of seawater and all the little microbes and nasties on the inside, shoots it into your DSMB. Uh, in this case, it's a sealed plastic bag and microbes love an anaerobic environment. So, it's best to give it a flush out. So with this style, uh, you, you've got the, uh, the purge valve. Yeah, just unscrew it. And just fill that uh, with water, just warm soapy water, some kind of household detergent or something, nothing too aggressive, uh, something that kills bacteria. And yeah, just give that a wash, kind of slosh it around and then dry it out. Uh, check the... Um, uh, the seal make sure that's nice and clean because sometimes sand and uh, like salt crystals can build up on that and it just means that it will slowly leak over time and yeah give that uh, that valve a little bit of a, a rinse from time to time for a semi closed something with like a fluted bottom uh, very similar you can either unscrew that valve and do the same thing or yeah just give it a flush through the uh, the bottom opening that way all of the uh, the entire system is getting flushed on the inside and uh, and then yeah it's getting cleaned on the uh, outside uh, whilst you're doing that as well but yeah I, I will clean things on the inside and the out basically anything that touches the water at the end of the dive or after the dive uh, if you can give it a quick spray down with some fresh water if you can't, then at least let it drip dry, take it home, then put it in like a dunk tank with some kind of detergent, something that kills nasties, and uh, yeah, wash it on the inside and the out, make sure it drains completely, make sure it dries completely, and then store it away properly. And that's it for another week. Uh, hopefully I answered all of your questions and uh, elaborated on them enough, something that you can understand. Uh, yeah, when you start to get into like conservatism factors on dive computers, especially gradient factors, it's, uh, it's a whole different ball game that takes a lot of like foundation. But once you understand it, once you understand what actually is uh, is going on, you can like customize your dive computer to be uh, to kind of suit your diving more and suit your buddy's diving more as well. But in the in the meantime, it's best to err on the side of caution, and uh, and it's only when your like physical fitness affects it, or with like Sunto computers, you can change the um, oh, altitude. Um, they had a, a three stage factor for uh, for altitude as well. Um, that's that's when you need to uh, start sort of making a bit more conservative and no or not it's it's really uh, sort of up to you to decide but if you have any scuba diving questions pop them down in the comment section below and if you use the ask mark hashtag makes it a lot easier for me to find it because it, it like scurries that way in behind the scenes in uh, in youtube uh, but i do see them i do my best to answer them as soon as i see them and then I actually film them in a completely separate, so uh, it can take a little time before you wonderful people can actually see me elaborate and just discuss the, uh, your wonderful questions online. But yeah, if you do have any questions, pop them down in the comment section below, and then remember to head over to scubadivermag.com. Check out all the wonderful things that we do. Thank you for watching everybody, and of course, safe diving.